This is a video to go through the construction of a line, a line segment, a ray, a circle, a polygon, a regular polygon, a given angle, parallel lines, and perpendicular lines. We'll start with the line. So we start with our blank page, we go up to the third option, which is our draw lines option. And if you remember, a line passes through two points and extends in both directions infinitely. So to draw a line, let's see if that instructions come up again. You can see it on the bottom. It says select two points. So I select my line and I pick any two points. And it draws a line between them, extends it in both directions forever. The next one is a line segment. If we go to the second option as a segment, and a segment, if you remember, has two points and it only extends between those two points. So if I pick a point A, or in this case C, and a point D, it draws a segment between the two points. Now, say for example, I want a segment between C and A. I can go to the same option, segment, and I could choose C, choose A, and it would draw the segment between them. So you can use existing points or you can create new points by just selecting the screen where you want them. The third one then was a ray. A ray starts at a point and then extends forever in one direction. So if we choose our ray, it asks us to pick a starting point and then another point that's going to determine the direction that it goes in. So I'm going to choose D and it's going to pass through the point B and continue on forever in one direction. So that is our ray. The next one then is a circle. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to get rid of what I have here. So I'm going to right click on your Chromebooks that is a two finger tap. Never mind, I guess we are starting over. This video is designed to go through all the basic functions for drawing in GeoGebra. So the topics we'll be looking at is drawing a line, a line segment, a ray, a circle, a polygon, a regular polygon, a given angle, a set of parallel lines, and a set of perpendicular lines. The first one we will start with is a line itself. This is the third option in our um, drawing tools, and it gives us our line options. Now a line will continue on in both directions forever, and as you can see on the bottom, it goes between two points. So our instructions were to select any two points. None exist yet, so we can just create two. There's my first one, there's my second, and there's the line that passes between the two of them. The next one then is a line segment. So a segment will pass between two points, but will not extend on forever. So it's a definite um, length. So we choose our first point again, and our second, and there's our line segment between the two of them. Now say I wanted to connect these two points here with the line segments. They already exist. So all I would have to do is make sure that my segment button is selected, which is choose the first one and the second one, and there's my segment connecting the two of them. The third one then is a ray. So a ray has a definite starting point, and then it goes on forever in one direction. So we can see there ray, choose a starting point, and then a second point to determine the direction. So I choose this point here, and then this one, and we can see my ray is drawn. The next one then is a circle. So just kind of to give myself a bit of space, I'm going to move my graphic, and I'm going to shift everything off the screen so we've got a blank space to start with. Okay, to draw our circle, we go up to the fifth option, and we want to do a circle with a center point. Now this gives us the option of picking a center point and then making the circle as big or small as we would like. I'm just going to go for a standard circle. There we go. Now the other option, which we will use it from time to time, is to draw a circle where we know the size of the radius. So for this one, we choose our center point and then we're asked to type a radius. So say if I want it to be 5 units wide. And there's my circle. Again, if I want to move those, if I think they're too close or anything like that, I can move them apart. All right, so now we've got a polygon. And again, I want a blank sheet, so I'm just going to move these off the screen. 
So a polygon, if we're just going to start with one, would be this option here, the fifth one. So say, I want to draw a triangle. I'm going to pick any three points. And then to complete the polygon, you close it, so you go back to your starting point. There's my polygon now. I can select the polygon itself and move it. And you can tell it's a polygon by the shaded area and the fact that all the lines are at it at the same time. Now, the other kind of polygon you can create is when you draw and say, you know, a couple of lines. And you want to just have this little centerpiece and say you want to know the area of it. Now, to do that, we go to our polygon tool again, and we just select the points that already exist. And then we go back to our starting point to close it off. And then there's our polygon. Now, one thing that is fun to point out here is if you select Remove option, any dot that is blue is movable. So if I select it, I can actually drag that around and change the shape of my object. If the dot is gray, which we can't really see yet, but I'll give you an example of one. So to show that, we go up to our line. I'm just going to throw any line in here. And then I, what I want to show now is the intersect option. So if we go up here to our second button and go down to intersect, we can actually say, okay, I want to know the exact point where these two lines meet. So when my first line is highlighted, I can choose any point on that line. So I can say this one, this line, and then the other line I want to know where it intersects is this one. And immediately it gives me that point. Now, if I click away, I can see that that point is gray or black while the others are blue. So if I pick a blue point, it'll move. But if I pick the black one, I can't do anything with it. And that's because that point is defined as being right there. So this line, I defined it by these two points that pass it through those two points. If I move one of those, the line has to move with it. Whereas this point of intersection, I can't move that because it's stuck to those two lines. If I say pick a point, and I want to attach it to this line. There's a limit to how I can move this point now. So if I try to move it right or left, I can, but I can slide up down because it's been attached to that line and I can go up and down forever. Okay, the next shape we're going to do is a regular polygon. Now, we need a reminder what a regular polygon is. This is one that will fit inside of a circle. All the sides and all the angles are the exact same. A regular polygon is our second option here. Now you can see on the bottom, it says we select two points and then we enter the number of vertices. Vertices being the number of corners that the object has. So the first line we're going to select is actually going to be how long each side of the shape is. So if I select this one, I have the option now of four vertices, which would give me a square. I could do five, which would be a pentagon. So I'm going to go with six and do a hexagon. And then we can see there's my original side, and it's now giving me a six sided figure where all the sides are the exact same and all the angles are the exact same. If I want to adjust the size of my hexagon, I can select the move option, and I can drag that point around. And again, if I want to position it slightly different, I can rotate it around, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. I can also go to my move option and select the entire object as a polygon and move it around the screen. The next one we're going to look at is drawing just a given angle. So say in class you're asked, okay, draw a graphic or draw a triangle that has a 20 degree angle and a 50 degree angle. Now, how do you start that? Well, we start with an angle. So we say, okay, I want an angle with a given size. So we select a leg point, a vertex, and then enter the size. So we don't start with the actual center of the angle itself. We start with one of the legs like we were, we were naming an angle. So I'm going to click out here, then this is going to be the vertex of my angle. And I get to choose the size of the angle, so I wanted a 20 degree angle, and then we get to choose which way is it going to open up. So counterclockwise would be from my original points to the vertex, it's going to go 20 degrees counterclockwise, clockwise would be the opposite. So select OK. And there we can see my original point, and now my new point with a 20 degree angle between it. 
So essentially what it is doing is it is rotating that point 20 degrees counterclockwise. Now, say we want to make a triangle out of this. We can go to our lines. And I can connect those guys back together and these two together. So I have the makings of my triangle here. Now the other one was a 50 degree angle. I'm going to go to angle of given size again. I'm going to select my leg point. In this case, I'm going to go to the other point of my triangle. And the other point that I know exists already. And I believe it's at a 50 degree angle. This time, do we want it to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? We want it to go clockwise to create a triangle with a clock. I press OK. And there's my new point up there. So I'll get my line out. Connect those two points, and then we can see my triangle has been formed. If I want to go make it a polygon, I can now do that. And there we go. So if I go to press move, and I try and move one of these now, it will keep the angles of my triangle the exact same, but it will change the side angles. And then we'll find out from the triangle proportion theorem that this will actually keep the triangle similar in all cases. So it's like dilating the triangle to bigger or small, as long as the angles stay the same. Another side note to have is we can find out this remaining angle here. Now, of course, we can do that by triangle sum theorem and just add up the angles of the triangle and then say subtract from 180, or we can use the measurement tool. So if we come up here to our angle one again, we can go to the first option just to measure an angle. Select any three points or two lines, and this will measure the angle between them. So I want to know the angle between this one, this one, and this one down here. And it tells me it's 110 degrees, which makes sense, since this is 50, this is 20. All three of them together will add up to 180 degrees. Okay. Next one we're going to do is a parallel line. So we're going to start with our original line, draw it anywhere, and we want to make a line parallel to that. Now a parallel line, by definition, will never touch it, has the exact same slope, and is in the same plane. In our case, the plane is your computer screen. So we're going to go to our transformations, and we're going to select parallel line. Now for a parallel line, we're going to select a point. Now this is the point that your new line is going to pass through, and then the line you want to be parallel to. So I want it to go, say, down here, and I want to parallel this line. And we get a parallel line to it that passes through our new point. Now say, what if we want a perpendicular line instead? A perpendicular line is two lines that meet at a 90 degree angle. So say, I want to draw a perpendicular line that passes through these two lines. So let's see what we have to do. Perpendicular line. Select a point, and then the line's going to be perpendicular to. So let's say we want it to go through like the middle here. There's my line, and then now I need to choose where it's going to go. So I'm just going to put it right here. Now, if I've truly drawn a perpendicular line, then this should be a 90 degree angle. We can check that by going into our angle measure. 